Hey guys, welcome to episode, what is it, what is it, seven, um, talking about about a week into having Aura with our family, and we're going to talk a little bit today about how we got her comfortable in her crate. Um, you know, first of all, I know people think that crates can be cruel, but when they're done correctly, the dog is going to feel like it's in their bedroom, and that's kind of the key, is making it feel like it's their bedroom. So we started out with this extra large crate because Aura is going to get huge. That said, it's a little too big for her right now, so we covered the back end to kind of make it feel a little bit more enclosed. So the first couple of days, and it's really all about patience with this, is we had the crate in here, door was open, we had it all nice and padded and beautiful, and we would have her into the crate at her own regard, at her own volition, and then we would treat her. Good, good girl, wonderful girl. Then she walked out. After a little while getting used to that, having her do stuff like this and nap in the room, um, the best thing we did was exactly what I'm doing now. So we just had our midday meal time. I know she's going to go down for a long time. So what I did is get her in the crate, treat her. Then I'm going to sit here with her for maybe 15 or so minutes. That's at the start. So the first time, 15 minutes, if she stays quiet, quietly open the door. So when she wakes up, she knows that it's open. It's a very slow process. Then. After 15 minutes, especially the first day, it was 15 minutes. The second day, it was 15 minutes. I went to try to take a shower. At the same time, the second I left her field of view, she started whining. Um, if they start whining, you know, at least in the beginning, you can ignore it for a little bit and see if they settle down. That's exactly what happened. So she ignored the, <laughs> she ignored, I ignored her and she mellowed out. So by the time I came out of the shower, she was already back down. And so again, 30 or so minutes passed, I opened the door. Did it again. Also make sure that um, there's ample toys in there, stuff that she's not gonna be a problem she has alone. Um, typically I take her collar off if I'm gonna be leaving the house while she's in the crate. Um, so after we've done this a few times, the real test was when I actually left the house and there was some whining, I could hear it down the street. It's tough, it's, it's growing pains and every dog is different, but she seems to really like it. She'll spend the entire night there. Uh, we also have all of our meal times in there. Um, also, another tip, if you have another dog, bring the other dog in the room. Uh, Esper and Aura have bonded. It's, it's really cute. But I've noticed that when she is in here with the room, within the room with Aura, she's much more calm. She's much easier. Um, I also mentioned before that crate training really helps with potty training. I'm going to do what my experience is with potty training next episode. We still feel it figuring someone's out. We still have had some accidents, no accidents today, knock on wood. So um, I'm doing a lot of research, especially on potty training. And, and really what I'm doing with the crate is establishing her domain. Dogs don't like to pee or poop in their domain. So right now she understands that this crate is hers. It's her bedroom, it's her stuff, it's comfort, it's, it's food. Um, so once I've established that, she hasn't peed or made an accident in there since the first day. And then, then we're going to start expanding her territory. So this room will soon, certainly soon become her territory. And then we're going to push it out to the rest of the rest of the house. Um, crate training is great. You know, a dog, depending on their age, their bladder size and how long they can hold it. Larger breed, Borzois can hold their pee pretty pretty well. So um, that's one luxury of having a larger dog. Smaller dogs, you need to go out more and more and more and more. Uh, they might not go throughout the entire night in the crate. Uh, we had that experience last night. She woke us up at about three o'clock in the morning and I took her down. She did her business. We came back up. She went back in the crate and she slept until morning. So um, be prepared for times that are mistiming. To that effect, the most important thing, especially, or at least I've noticed, Consistency in your routine. When she, they're fed, when they're taken out, it's so, so, so important. Like I know she's fed. We've been at the dog park. We've been walking around for a couple of hours. I'm exhausted, so she's gonna be exhausted. So use that to your advantage. Use that to get her used to her crate, get her used to, to making it her home. Um, I think that's it. That was my experience. You know, I don't know, I don't know if sight hounds are different. Esper on the other hand, absolutely de de despised her crate. You know, she came through us for an adoption, so she was a little bit older. She also 
was, had a little bit of abandonment issues. She didn't want to be left. So we knew early on the crate was not going to work for her. And some dogs, it's just not going to work. But we're hoping because, you know, things happen and you can't always be monitoring your dog, uh, which is so important when they're puppies. You really have to maintain their environment and keep an eye on them all the time. That the crate is a great way. It's a great way to control their environment. Um, so please, as always, any comments about this, I'll be happy to um, answer. We're still going through the process ourselves. We're still growing with this crate thing. I've never created training a dog. It's my first time, so I'm happy. It looks like it's it's doing pretty well, um, <clears throat> but we'll see. It's going to be a couple big days coming up where I have some jobs where I'm going to be out of the house, so I'll let you guys know uh, what happens with that when I do my potty training video. Um, you know, and... and to be honest, I really am making these videos for people who have want to get a Borzoi or want to get a Sighthound puppy. It's not every dog. I'm just going to be explaining about what I went through with this little pupper. And also with the difference between two of the same breed, Esper being completely different, even though they're both females. So it's really been interesting. This is the, they're, they're completely different creatures, completely different personalities. Um, we'll see if we can get the little one to spin. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. Keep uh, keep keep with the comments. I know there's a few comments I'm going to get to right after this, um, but thank you guys. Appreciate it. I'll keep you guys updated. Bye.